Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to The Lost. I am Stylosa and oh my god have we just been given a shed load of news about Overwatch. So, alright then, major shock, the game is not free to play. Now I really thought the game would be free to play and supported with a cosmetic skin system. Um, like League of Legends and games of that ilk where you, you know, sell character skins, sell weapon skins. We already know Overwatch will have spray paints in the game, maybe sell special sprays and stuff like that. I honestly thought that was the way they were going to go and maybe they were going to have a kind of Heroes of the Storm system where there is a boxed version of the game you can buy or even a special version of the game you can buy which comes with skins. It's like a starter's edition sort of thing. But that's not the case with Overwatch. What we've got with Overwatch are three different editions, all of which you have to pay to play. Then This is not a free-to-play game. The first edition we've got is just the Overwatch edition. Now, this is the download-only version. This is only available for PC players, and this is $29.99. These are English pounds as well. Uh, that's pretty cheap, actually, for, I guess, a AAA release. So for this, you get all of the current heroes. So we don't really know about heroes after this, although I'll go into detail on that in a second because I do have some quotes off Jeff Kaplan, which have been taken from polygon you get the, um, the pre-purchase skin which is the special skin for Widowmaker, and you get the iconic environments which are the maps which is like okay the next edition we've got is origins edition now this gives you everything the previous edition gives you but you get five special origin skins you get overgrown bastion you get black watch rise you get slips slipstream tracer that's a bit of a tongue twister strike commander morrison and security chief farah you also get in typical blizzard fashion digital goods that you can use in other games. So you get a Baby Winston pet for World of Warcraft, you get an Overwatch card back for Hearthstone, you get a Tracer hero, uh, you get the Tracer hero, sorry, for Heroes of the Storm, you get Mercy's Wings in Diablo, and you get player portraits in StarCraft 2. Now, this is forty nine at uh, $45.99, so that's more in line with a, I suppose, a traditional AAA priced product, especially in the UK. And then we've got the Collector's Edition, which they don't actually have a price for this just yet. This is everything you got before in the Origins Edition, apart from you get the visual source book. So if you're a bit of a sucker for the art books, um, this contains one of those. It contains the game's soundtrack, and it also contains a Soldier 76 statue, which doesn't look too bad. But, you know, that's the typical kind of Collector's Edition thing we see these days, is statues and, and models of in-game characters and, and God knows what. So let's just take a look at a clip taken from the BlizzCon opening ceremony uh, where Jeff Kaplan, well, he says in very clever language what you will be getting. That in mind, when you buy Overwatch, you will get all 21 of the heroes that we've announced to you so far. They all come with the game. You see, that's very interesting because what he's saying there is you get all of the heroes so far. He's not actually saying you get all of the heroes forever. So are we going to sell you these heroes? Um, how will we add these heroes to the game? Will there be expansion packs, paid DLC? We don't know, or at least that's what they're trying to say. Now, let's look at some quotes that have been taken from this interesting interview which has taken place with Polygon, um, between Kaplan and, and Polygon. And Kaplan's obviously the game's director, in case you guys haven't, you know, caught onto that just yet. So, this is what he says in the, the first little quote I've got. It's not our intention to dodge the question, Kaplan said. We don't have a concrete answer on what happens after the initial launch in terms of heroes. There was one misconception that we're going to have 21 at launch and then we're going to have a hero store with additional heroes and that couldn't be further from the truth. But then the simple question to that is, well, what, what is the truth? You know what I mean? But anyway, let's, um, you know what? I'm British, so let's be cynical. So I think it would be extremely bad PR to announce heroes locked behind paywalls at BlizzCon, especially when this is such a big concern in the Overwatch community. Maybe they absolutely do intend to sell heroes and maps down the line, but hey, we'll drop that bombshell once the initial rush of sales are out the door, at which point people are already inside our Overwatch ecosystem and they will lap up the required paid for extra content down the line. Or, you know, maybe they really just don't know how to monetize the game. I suppose we're going to have to wait and see, but it is, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? It's like they're keeping their doors open. And they're not saying yes or no. It's almost like a, an answer you'd expect of a politician. So Jeff goes on to say, We really made the decision on the business model based on what we thought was right for the gameplay, Kaplan told Polygon in an interview at BlizzCon. If you've played a lot of Overwatch, you will know that hero switching mid-match is a core part of it. And it's really fun dynamic part. The difference, the difference maker between Overwatch and other games is the fluidity in the team compositions and matching what the other team's doing. So, I just want to call this right now. 
If they hide heroes behind paid DLC, the game will ultimately suffer. You cannot fragment a game which is dependent on the hero switch in which Jeff has just said. I've directly quoted him. So you cannot, you cannot, cannot fragment a game which is dependent on hero switching and everybody having access to all the heroes with mandatory paywalls because that will make the gameplay suffer. Anyways, Jeff goes on. A lot of the free-to-play models that we're exploring involve people not having access to enough heroes to make those team compositions actually viable. We really didn't want to change the core gameplay and limit it in some way just to make the game free-to-play. You see, I find this really, really weird, this comment, because clearly they were experimenting with selling new heroes and or possibly hiding them behind paywalls within DLC packs or expansion packs or God knows what. I'm not sure why they would even entertain such a thought when Jeff clearly states hero switching is a core part of the game. So surely limiting that would cause damage to the game and the player base as a whole and surely they would know that. So I don't know why they even bothered looking at that in the first place. So that's kind of a worrying sign for me that they're, they've already gone down this route and they just really don't want to announce it just yet. So let's take a look at what we know because a lot of what I've just said, it is speculation. We don't have any hard answers. It forces us to speculate, and you know that's that's down to Blizzard not saying to us, okay, this is how the game is going to be supported. This is its monetization system. Instead, all they've done is told us that there's three versions of the game. The game is not th it's not free to play, and you know, I'm kind of okay with this, but I'm also kind of shocked that it's not free to play. I think I'm shocked because it really did look 100% to me like it was going to be a free to play title that would be supported with cosmetic items, so character skins, weapon skins, sprays because I thought they were really going to follow the League of Legends example and introduce new heroes. Every couple of months, there'd be a new hero, a new hero, a new hero. Everybody can play the new hero. It changes up the game's meta a little bit, and everybody gets access to it in some kind of way, but then they sell skins for the other characters. You know, I, I think I would be totally happy buying skins for this game if it was free to play. I know I would. I mean, hell, I, I think the game's brilliant, so my kind of opinion on the game, if you ask me about it, I'm going to tell you it's great and you should buy it all day long, but I would have been fine if it was free to play. I'm also shocked because free-to-play means a much larger player base as well, which surely would help the game in the long run. And I'm also okay with this because it does raise the barrier of entry to people looking to cause mischief in the game. So people who want to run Smurf accounts and stomp all the lower MMR players, or people who want to hack the game. It's going to be more difficult for those, to, for those people to pick up the game because I don't think they're going to be wanting to be paying for a full price title every time they want to try something dodgy. So it will help the game out in that respect. So it will mean a better quality of life for the players. And I think that's a good thing. But I do still believe I would have taken free to play over a paid for release. I think it's interesting though, guys. Especially how they dance around the subject of monetization. Do you think we're in for a major sting down the line when Blizzard announced paid for hero packs along with map packs? Or do you think Blizzard will go... The typical Blizzard way they've gone with games like World of Warcraft and, and whatnot, where they will sell expansion packs and these will be required because if you don't pick them up, then you won't be able to be competitive anymore because they'll contain new heroes. Or do you think Blizzard will eventually go the cosmetic item store route, but they're trying to have their cake and eat it? So we want to sell you a full, a full price game and then we're going to support the game with a free to play model. What do you think, guys? I want to know what you think in the comments below. I've been Stylo, so you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. By all means, follow me on Twitter. Send me questions on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter, and I will respond to questions. And as I say, leave a comment below. All right, guys. I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.
game. Epic. 